that takes me to Alessandro Nilo because Brazil is dealing with both at the same time. You have your old scourge of HIV and you have been working on this with your NGO in Recife for a very long time. And now you have this new scourge of Zika. And as Jason um, anticipated one of my questions for you in his comments, there's a commonality between how the social response to HIV and the social response to Zika in the sense that both of them, the real burden falls on women. In the case of HIV, with this 80% of, of incidence of new cases is female. And in the case of Zika, it turns out to be sexually transmissible, but not from female to male, from male to female. And who is the one that's pregnant with the possible microcephaly baby? It's the woman. And who ends up taking care of that very, very needy 24-7 care baby? It's the woman. So t tell us what's going on in Brazil. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Laurie. I'm not asking about the coup, I'm asking. No, <laughs> no thank you, Laurie, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I think this is the question that I heard more since I arrived here at the US uh, two weeks ago, what is going on in Brazil. I will try to focus on the debate here, okay? Not going to politicize, but I think it's, I'd like to start uh, with the example that was uh, given by um, Dr. Ren in the beginning because I like very much this idea of the cup half empty and half full. Because I think that what we are living here at this moment is that uh, we are at the tipping point. So depending on what we are going to do next, tomorrow we can see this cup empty or full. So it's, it's not something done yet to all of us, I think it's clear. And in the middle of this big picture and context, what we are facing at the global level is also what we are facing in Brazil, which is part of a big war against, women, uh, against human rights. And within this war against women, women's rights, not women's, uh, human rights, uh, I think that we have also these, uh, connection of the debate that we had until here, which is uh, evidence against ideology. So I have the feeling that we are talking about the old epidemic of HIV, let me call it old, and the new ones, but having to touch upon some very, uh, it is an emergency yet, all, everything continues like an emergency, but without addressing the old themes that we at this point should be learned that should, we should be addressing, which are, which are related to human rights. And again, issues like sexual reproductive health and rights, comprehensive sexuality <laughs> education, how we are uh, talking when we are saying that communities are engaged, you know, because sometimes it's easy to us to say, oh, but from HIV, we learned that communities must be engaged. Did we learn that as really? When you see the amount of money allocated to the work done by communities, then you see that, well, perhaps I didn't learn that yet. Some governments, for sure, they didn't. And I think this is part of the conversation that we need to have here, this, this combi combined approach. But having said that, I think that, at, you know, in the past months, I start using to say that I'd like to talk more about the state's responsibility on that. Because at this stage, when I look, for instance, to HIV, what I saw is that since 2009, I think that the states, the states dropped the ball of prevention, right? And when you drop the ball of prevention and you start only focusing on medicalized approach, which are very welcome, and I think that we are full of evidence base that they work, I think that we are losing the opportunity of bringing that issues in the conversation. So all, everything that you talk about here, like why governments are not prioritizing such investments on public health, why uh, we are still facing stigma discrimination, which, which by the way, it's not uh, never related to one single issue. Stigma discrimination comes together with the layers of vulnerability, right? So you 
you do not suffer stigma because you are HIV positive, but because you are HIV positive, you are gay or sex worker, or you are a woman, or, you know, it's a layers of stigma that come together. So the states drop the ball and are losing a huge opportunity. And I think that Zika will bring that, we should be bring that also to talk about comprehensive, comprehensive sexuality education, sexual reproductive health and rights, and all of in, all of these related to human rights approaches and perspectives. The second issue, because I, second um, reason, because I think that the states are responsible is that I think that our states in Latin America and many countries, they mix their responsibility with religious and fundamentalist approaches. okay? So what we are seeing, let me give you the, the example in Brazil. What is going on in Brazil now is that we are approving laws wh where you cannot talk more about gender within schools, within education. I will never be able to approve a long comprehensive sexuality education now in Brazil because, for instance, uh, the policies uh, related to women were given to a new Pentecostal woman to take care of this. So again, I think it need to bring back the state's responsibility in, in this matter of what are the, cho the choices that they are doing and that are not taking us to evidence-based approach. This is one thing. Second thing, or third thing that I'd like to talk as well is that we will not win these battles against uh, all these uh, emergencies and crises without really repoliticizing the debate. So the choices that I make when I choose my government, when I choose the leaders, when I say who will be in charge and you have you know, the pen to sign the check to pay the bill, these are the ones that we are losing. So I think sometimes that we are working like public health approach or something, you know, let's give this only to people that are working in health. Human rights people are not paying attention to financing and et cetera. So what is going on here at the UN at this moment is, is that there are words that we cannot say, right? So sexuality, it's, it's sexuality. We are talking about HIV, right? Most of the cases, sexual transmitted. We cannot say the word sexuality at the UN. We cannot recognize a key populations as a population that are subjects of rights. They are always, or victims, or they are vectors, but they are not, you know, they are the ones leading the response. So I think that unless we really refocus our approach, it doesn't matter if it's Zika, if it's HIV, discrimination will continue to be the worst symptom of this disease everywhere. You bring up. You bring up many really strong points, important points, and uh, it makes me think about things I've been warning about regarding Zika coming to this country, because we have five states in our 50 states, five that have pass laws that make it illegal to have an abortion for 